Hi, this is Brad Linder from Mobile Computing, and today I want to show you a relatively new web browser for Google Android called Escope. Uh, there's a paid and a free version. The free version actually has most of the features of the paid version, but you don't get as many icons on the home screen and a couple of other features like that. So, uh, first thing I want to show you is it's available in land, or it uh, recognizes landscape or portrait mode. But you'll notice in landscape mode, you actually have more icons here in the toolbar than you do in um, portrait mode, and that's because the toolbar actually scrolls, which I think is a pretty neat way to save space here. So by default, you can favorite a site, uh, enter a URL, refresh home, but if you want to do new tabs, uh, history, search, or copy and paste, you just scroll over. Um, now by default, you have the Android taskbar and the toolbar, which can take up a fair amount of space, but you just scroll down and the toolbar disappears. Click the full screen button from the settings and that disappears too. Let's go ahead and load a page from our history here. So here's Mobile Computing's home page. And scroll, and the top bar disappears. We want it back. There it is again. Now, this browser supports multi-touch zoom, and it has uh, pretty quick zooming features. But if you don't have a multi-touch phone, or you don't like using multi-touch, there's actually two other ways to zoom. You can do the default Android double-click, and it'll zoom kind of slowly. I'm not a big fan of that. But here's a really cool feature that sets this apart from most other browsers. Press, or actually press, and on the second one, hold. And now you can zoom out by moving your finger left, and in by moving it right. So I'll just show you how that works again. And we're zoomed way in. So I think that's a pretty cool feature, and uh, it's a little takes a little getting used to, but I like it a lot. This browser uh, supports uh, tab browsing, so I can go up to the toolbar and click the tab button and create a new tab. And hopefully you can see up there that there are multiple tabs. So in the second tab, let's go ahead and uh, load. Oh, here we go. New York Times website. You can see it loads pretty quickly. And again, the uh, zoom functionality works great. And we've got several tabs up there. And once the multiple tabs are open, you can also see that there's a plus button for creating additional tabs. To close a tab, just tap it and hold it which I think is a little bit dangerous. It, it could be a little too easy to get rid of a tab that way. Um, you can also, if you've visited a couple of pages, say let's uh, open up Yahoo, you can hit the back button once to go back to the, your previous page. Hit it again, tab closes. So uh, pretty simple navigation. In terms of uh, features, uh, I already showed you that you've got uh, windowed or full screen, which is pretty nice. There's a download feature, which is available for um, uh, the uh, paid version, I think you get a limited download feature when you use the free version. Um, there's a file browser built right into the web browser, which is pretty neat and uh, sort of separates this from a lot of others. And you also have a list of, come on. Okay, it's deciding to be a little bit finicky here. Um, you can get a list of running ta uh, applications, which you can close. So if your web browsing experience is uh, getting a little bit too slow, you can close other applications from here. That's always a little bit tricky. You want to make sure you know what you're doing if you run if you decide to close apps, because um, Google Android, the operating system, does a pretty good job of managing tasks on its own. And if you close something, you never know which other applications might be relying on it. But if you have like games running in the background or something along those lines, it might be a good idea to close them if your web browser is getting a little too slow. And uh, under settings, there's a couple of other options here. You can uh, default full screen or not. You can default whether uh, it's always on or not. Um, orientation, you can have it in auto, which should automatically detect whether it's landscape or portrait, or you can choose one. Um, and there's one feature in here that I really like. You can set it as your default browser. I just need to figure out where it is. There we go. Use volume keys for page scroll. And I'll show you how that works. You can actually, if that's enabled, instead of using the volume to control the volume, you can actually scroll through content. 
just by hitting the volume buttons on your phone, which I think is a pretty neat feature, uh, especially if you are sitting around and just want to use one hand with the device and not have to hold it with two hands in order to scroll. Um, of course, you can also use the scroll button if you have a phone that has one. And uh, one other thing that I think I forgot to show you is in addition to creating a new tab using the taskbar up here, you can create a new tab by tapping and holding on any link and it'll open in a background tab. So there it is.